I'm Erica, also known as Emonique, and this is my real life. Hang out with me as I side-eye the ups and stumble through the downs. Watch as I turn my tiny piece of the Arizona desert into a tropical oasis. Fight to beat infertility and figure out where I fit as an artist in this crazy creative world. All while awkwardly discovering my authentic self. I'll be talking out loud about the things I wish someone would have said a while ago and sorting through what I wish I didn't know. Who knows? Maybe you can relate as I often ask myself.
wake up or get out of bed because you're super hungry but you don't feel like cooking either um first of all i haven't slept in this late in so long it feels good but also why am i so fucking tired um but my stomach is super hungry like it's on the verge of growling but i know as soon as i stand up and get moving it's gonna i'm gonna get hangry and i need to know what to put in my mouth immediately and i don't feel like cooking i could have my coconut flour pancakes i could have i think i have one egg left but i want to save that for my salad I don't want that. I have cereal, but I'm out of milk. I could have yogurt, Greek yogurt and fruit. I could have Greek yogurt, fruit, and coconut flour pancakes. <laughs> I need to respond to my dietitian and give him the update. Um. Damn, I really, I, what I really want is cereal, but I'm out of freaking milk and I haven't had a chance to go to the store. I don't have any fruit, which is wild to me, but like I do have fruit. They're just, the berries are frozen, but I don't have any apples or bananas, which I really, 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 really want a banana. Um, or I could just skip breakfast and go straight to lunch and have my, um, leftovers but it's too early for that maybe I should just start with tea I could start with tea and have what well, I had tea last night before I went to bed So it's Sunday morning, just about 7 a.m. And I decided that I wanted to go to the gym. And look what I see out my window. Hold on, let me, <laughs> I'm trying to get my shit together also. outside my window rain it's raining outside <laughs> I love this for me love it for me this is my treat for getting my butt up and going outside and working out and it's raining I'm about to go have fun okay what do I, oh, water, meds. I have not eaten breakfast, so I need to pull a juice. And I think I want, I need to drink a red juice. I've been slacking on the red juices. Okay. And let's see, a kind bar, cranberry. Oh my god. It has been a long day, let me tell you. Well, actually, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to get in the shower because I have not, I've been gone all day long. I did not look like this when I left this morning. Um, but I look like this now and I just need a sturdy shower. Um, let me wash my hair, let me wash my body and come back and tell you how my day turned around. So right now I just need to like unwind, get clean, relax, probably gonna make a cup of tea and just sit. It's been a long day. Alrighty.
Got my tea. Hair is washed. Showered. Feeling much better. Oh my goodness. Today was a day. It's Sunday. It started off beautiful. It was raining. I had an energy to go work out early enough and do church at the same time. And it was quiet at the gym and it was just amazing. I felt inspired enough to do a little running and I just felt great. And stop by the store, do a little grocery shopping. I was gonna come home and just clean up, eat a little something, relax and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. All of that happened this morning. Um, I made it through the door, made it through the door, put my groceries down and um, just checked my phone. I don't know what made me. Like, I just put my big bag of groceries down on the ground and I checked my phone and I had a message from my aunt saying, please call me. I know when something is this way or that way, up or down, and just by that message, I knew something was wrong. What I didn't realize was that she had tried to call me three times. My phone was on silent. I didn't, I didn't see the missed calls, I just saw her text message and it just said, call me. Called her and um, the um, paramedics came to get my grandmother and take her to the emergency room because she was unresponsive. She was breathing. Um, but wasn't able to answer questions or move or do anything. And so um, they called the ambulance, called the, they called 911, ambulance came, took her to the hospital nearby. And um, she called to let me know what was going on. And it was literally happening at that moment. I was just like, okay calmly said okay, hung up the phone. She told me what hospital she was at. I put the cold stuff away in the fridge. I grabbed my bag and walked right back out of the door. Like this happened with all within 90 seconds. Um, I get across town and um, to the hospital and they had not, my mom was there, my aunt was there and they had not been back to see her yet. They were still running tests. And so I had gotten there within the same very quickly. Um, by the time they take us back to see her, um, they, the nurse had explained that she had a massive stroke and that, um, the CT scan also showed that, um, and I'm, I'm not familiar with these, these terms, but essentially the CT scan revealed that um, half of her brain was not getting any blood because of the, there's, I don't know if it's a bleed or a blockage or what, I don't know, I don't understand entirely what a stroke is I think it's a blockage and so whatever event happened in her brain it cut off all blood flow to the right side of it and um, she also did not have any feeling or movement or any control over her right side paralyzed on the on the right side I believe I don't I'm like trying to recollect because like I'm there, I'm listening, I'm observing, but I'm also not there. And like, it's just hard to explain. Like my mind is just like trying to catch up and process what's going on. And like, I'm there, but I'm not there. So I'm trying to remember everything that happened today. 
And so, forgive me. Um, uh, I don't, I, we don't have any experience with like stroke incidents with anybody in our family or friends that we know. To my knowledge, I don't know. I know someone else who has suffered from a stroke and um, like there's different levels of it, right? And so needless to say, um, my grandmother was certainly not herself. She, um, like I don't even know how to explain it, like she, I, I, she could hear us, I believe, and um, she couldn't move her right side, but she kept lifting up her left arm, which I didn't understand. Um, she kept just, she kept lifting up her left arm and she could make certain noises. I didn't understand if that was her trying to communicate with us. Or if this was like a, like a result of like like stroke damage like involuntary like i didn't understand what was happening but definitely when the three of us were there earlier this morning she was trying to raise her hand and lift her arm and she was doing that for quite some time and was making some noises and her eye was open and um you know, we just were hugging on her, kissing her, holding her hand, squeezing her hand, and just trying to get her to relax because it really seemed like she was trying to like fight hard to it seemed like she was trying hard to like embrace us or like hold us or say like talk to us. But, uh, it was just so confusing because you don't know what's happening. You don't know, like, I didn't know if it was her or I didn't understand what was happening. But, like, thinking back, I definitely feel like that was her trying to just tell us that, I don't know, just communicate and just, like, hold us because she didn't do it again the rest of the day like she would move she would kind of try to raise her arm and she like if i held her hand she would like squeeze my hand just a little bit but she could not talk she made very little noises um but she slept most of the day but it was kind of kind of odd because i feel like even though she slept most of the day I feel like she could still hear us and she would still try to like let us know that she could hear us. So I don't know what goes on in the brain where it's like asleep and like awake at the same or like aware. But I felt like um, there were moments throughout the day where that was happening and um, you know the three of us got there first. But then we had waves of people coming in from all over to um, to see her and just be with her and like pray with her and over her. And so um, once, once her other granddaughter got there, um, I, you know, I kind of to I told her in her ear, I was like, hey, you know, we're all here. Um, my cousin is there and I was holding her hand and like just kind of just touching her and um it seemed like she was trying to verbalize or, or make noises and um try to lift her hand and she did that like I said throughout the day um every time that we made it known that we were there or someone was there and my aunt was talking to her and 
she it was almost like she was trying to respond or acknowledge what she was saying by making noises but her eyes were closed of course and she just could not move and so um going back to what the nurse had initially told us they said that because it was so intense and there's no blood going to that side of her brain that for something this massive, there isn't anything that they recommend to do. There, I mean, there's nothing that could be done. They weren't really going to treat her for anything in particular and that she would probably never be the same after this. Um, and so um, they were kind of wanting to know what we wanted to do whether we wanted to um, like take her to like a hospice place or what, or just kind of wanted to know what her wishes would have been or like what our, what we wanted to do in case that something happened, did they want to try to re resuscitate or not and all those things. And so, um, I mean, the, the way that they were speaking to us this morning and the demeanor and everything just made it seem like, and they even said, at this point, we just want her to not be in any pain and we just want her body to relax and just rest and just make her comfortable. And so um, that was pretty much the entire day. I... Um, we probably took a break to go get something to eat around I don't know three o'clock and um, by the time we came back with the food and ate, I, did, I sat outside to eat because by that time, so many of the family and friends and everybody ha were like there. It was like basically half half of the waiting room were made up of or was made up of our family and another family that was going through something. It was like we had basically the whole half of the waiting room locked up. Like there was so many people. And so by the time like we got our food. I just wanted to sit outside and just, just kind of have some time to myself and just like, I don't know, I just needed time to myself. So I sat outside for a little while. And then by the time I came back in, my mom had given me the update that like the nurse said that her, my grandmother's levels were in, improving and that, um, the droopiness in the side of her, the right side of her face had gone away. And um, that was just like amazing to hear. Like I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, it's just, I just don't, I don't know anything about this. And so I, I, I couldn't understand if this was like, I mean, she's still alive but trying to understand she'll never be the same and like she's still alive. I don't, I, I just, I like I'm still processing obviously. Um, and so to hear that some things were improving, like I was happy about it, I am happy about it, but I'm just like further confused like, okay, is there a chance that she could come back to us? And like with me, like I'm really trying to have a healthy balance of hope and like I want her to come back to us, but also like I don't want to get my hopes too high up because I don't know. Like it's, I've just, I've never seen her like this. And um, I know it's like day one, this literally happened this morning. Like she, 
it literally happened this morning and so I know that her body is like really tired she was already in some pain from something else she um already had low energy because of that pain so I know that after this like it makes sense also that she's just sleeping and I'm just praying that she I don't know like wakes up tomorrow but I just don't understand anything about this and um, of course it's hard to see like your your family member in a position where like it's they're not them like they're not the same and they're not they can't speak to you they can't look at you really uh, and you don't know if they know you're there with them you don't know what they need only thing that we were like trying to make sure of is that she was covered up because she's always cold always always cold here in Arizona like in the middle of summer if she gets in the car and you turn the AC on she's going to be freezing and so we just wanted to make sure that we kept her covered up because we knew that she was cold in there and I held on to her hand on the side that was um, like paralyzed and her hand was so cold and I just was trying to like keep her tucked in and it was just um, extremely hard like like even though like she's older and like we know things are inevitable right like you still like it's still hard and it's still like fucking sucks and it's still like you're just never ready for it ever it doesn't matter what the circumstance are circumstances are you're never ready for it and um I just didn't because I just I just did not expect to be like here right now today I just was trying to talk to her on Friday I called her Friday and was trying to just check on her because we had went to physical therapy and she was really sore from physical therapy and I just wanted to check on her after that and um, her phone has been like not working very well so we couldn't hear each other and I was like okay well grandma I'll just I'll call you I'll try to call you back later and you know I have to go back to work but I'll try to call you back later and um, Friday I had the the benefit that night and it was just like I just didn't have a chance and so I was supposed to do it Saturday so just so many things and then this happens this morning and I'm just like what is what is going on but um we had um so many like family members and friends and like her friends and just a lot of people came through um to see her and it was very organized and respectful and everybody got a chance to see her love on her talk to her and I'm praying that that, you know, that she could hear every single person that came to see her. There were people calling on the phone, talking to her and praying for her. And I'm just really, really hoping that she heard every single person so she knows how much we all, how much we love her. I mean, she knows that, right? She knows because that's our, that's the whole thing. So, I mean, she knows. Um, but hopefully further, she, uh, at, at the very least, doesn't feel alone today or tonight because we were on it. Like, we were all there as much as possible. And, um, like, I think right now what's happening is what's catching up to me now is the realization of what's happened because like even though I was there all day long I just got home so I was there from like 10 30 this morning to like I left at five even though I was there with her that entire time like 
it's just now really like sinking in what's happening. And I think, I feel like this entire time, like my heart is at peace, but my head is trying to figure out all this shit and it's like so confused. So that's what's happening right now. It's like, I'm just trying to understand and realize what's happening. But um, I know that my grandmother knows that I love her. And I know like, I have no doubts that she loves me. And you know, she's proud of me and all that stuff. Like that we are good on. It's just inevitably hard because, you know, like I said, that's, that's my, that's my buddy. And uh, like I said, even though inevitably, like we have to just kind of get ready for, uh, you know, the transitioning of our older people, uh, still, there is really no getting ready. There is really no like, like, I'm cool with that. Like, I understand it and I'm at peace with it. Like, if she feels like she's ready to go, I'm at peace with that. And we've loved on each other for a long, long time. And I know that she's okay and I will be okay, but still. And it's just like, we also don't want her to suffer. So it's like, if she's really, if she's truly not going to come back as herself, we don't want her to just be in a place like this, going on and on, you know? We don't want that for her and she sure as hell wouldn't want that for herself. She's already said it. And she's made it known frequently throughout the years even when she was like going through cancer treatments and stuff she's like if this doesn't work like I'm not doing any more treatments I'm not doing radiation like I'm just not gonna do it and so she's always made it very clear what she can and cannot handle and what she will and won't do or doesn't want to do but when I tell you this lady has like she has like, I was just telling you about, like, my friend's son and how he's been so strong. My grandmother has been the same way. Like, the pillar of strength. She just keeps beating ass wave after wave after wave. Everything that, like, like got pitched her way, she beat it. She's so strong. And just, like, earlier, just to hear that her levels were improving, I was like, of course they are. <laughs> because she's a freaking fighter like of course that's what I'm talking about and so um, I'm just praying for her tonight and I want her to get rest and I want her to I want to see what she can do tomorrow so um, I'm gonna go and see her I'm gonna try to sleep I don't know I'm gonna do my best but I'm gonna go see her tomorrow and uh, we're just gonna see We're just gonna see. But yeah, um, that's what happened today. Ugh. That's what happened today. And, um, like, I don't know. I feel like I wanted to record this for me mostly I mean and a lot of this is like even when I'm ranting and raving about nothing at all and record it I feel like this is an easier way for me to like it serves multiple purposes when I'm talking about infertility it's to like just put information out there put my experience out there i want that documented for the next version of me like the next person who doesn't know what is up from down and like how to do things that was my intent with this 
when I talk about my plants, it's just because I know that it brings me so much peace and joy and like, I love it so much. I want to share that with other people. And I know that there's so many other planty people out there who feel the same way. And we just, we're just sharing joy. When I share other personal things in my life, it's more or less just like a video diary. It's not for content. It's not for entertainment. It's like a video diary for me and I share it. And like there's some part of me that wants the universe to understand like, like the back end of me. Like I just, I've always felt kind of misunderstood and it's not for any particular person or type of, it's just, I want to be understood. Um, but even if I'm not like, that's not going to like make her like, I'm not, it's not sustenance. Like I don't, if it's not doing that purpose, then it's just not, I could care less. But, um, I just wanted to say that why I record very intimate, personal things. It's me, it's my video diary and it truly does help for me to like speak things out. Um, like say things because it helps me to just feel, um, it's like another version of therapy, if you will, which I'm talking to Jackie this week, which is right on time, but I don't, I'm not a talker. Like I talk to this freaking camera, but I don't talk to people. I didn't talk to anybody the entire day there. I just was there, but I don't like really express. And so this helps me to get it out and to be, at ease and to organize my thoughts and my feelings and all the things. Um, and if it ends up helping someone else or moving someone else for like, you just never know what people need or want to see or what have you, but that's why I do this. And, you know, later on, sometimes I go back and I, I rewatch my stuff and it helps me to see from like another perspective of myself like it just helps i don't know how to explain it but i did want to say that because i'm certainly not doing this for any other reason that's like superficial or it or nonsense like doesn't matter because it doesn't like if i didn't ha ever have to do this again like it would be fine but anyways, my tea is getting cool, so I'm gonna drink that and I'm gonna try to relax because I need to be able to clear my head and my sinuses before I can sleep, otherwise I won't sleep. So I'm gonna do that. All right, good night.